gonna go ahead and do the valve cover, gaskets, and replace spark plugs. So the first step we're gonna do is remove the two clamps on the battery post and set those aside. We're gonna remove the two bolts on the throttle body linkage and slip the cable out just like this. Also you're gonna remove this accelerator by sliding by sliding you're gonna remove the three bolts on the brackets that mount the accelerator cable. Squeeze the green tab over and slide up to remove this tubing from the valve cover. You remove the, the electrical harness from the map sensor and this it's open the air cleaner box to remove the ducting for the throttle body. Also, we're going to remove these two clamp, this clamp, and pull the whole unit out as well. The unit should come out exactly like this. Set that aside. It was a good idea to remove the air filter and just take a visual inspection and vacuum this debris out of the air cleaner and any other debris that you see in the engine compartment. Also, a quick tip with these air filters between oil changes, two or three oil changes, and I make a I end up replacing the filter I like to tap the air filter out just to get any dust or anything out of these air filters so we'll disconnect the throttle body set that aside give this a little tool this slides right out of the way another electrical connector and that just slides right out of the way and for these, you'll just twist and push back. Oh, push on this green tab here. And you should just be able to push right back, just like that, and out of the way. Also, you're gonna pull this guy and take a vacuum hose, push that off on this side. And then you're gonna remove this clamp and hose, push that back out of the way. And go ahead and take a small screwdriver, like so, and push down here, and you'll be able to separate the two. Once you push down, you, you just separate the two by pulling apart, just like that. Okay, so these two main connectors are separate the harness from the uh, upper intake ignition. And for this sensor, you just push and pull out and push on this electrical connection, push and pull out, just like that. Here's another vacuum, a vacuum line. Just kind of give it a wiggle and pull out. these nuts and slide this unit off then you could also remove these two bolts and slide the EGR uh, exhaust recirculation valve out as well okay in the next step you just want to go over all the electrical and make sure anything you see is unplugged and go around to all the bolts on the valve covers where the electrical um, harness is fastened to these bolts you just go ahead and pull those up and you'll see they're all around the the outer edge of the valve cover where the bolts are and go ahead and unplug the spark plug coils coil packs for the ignition system okay so once you have everything removed from the intake upper intake go ahead and remove these eight bolts four on the front and four down below one two three four between here then your intake should be loose like mine is. Using a ratchet wrench with a 10 millimeter deep wall socket, go ahead and remove the four bolts, two on the top, two on the bottom. And once those four bolts are removed, set the throttle body aside. Okay, so once the throttle body is removed, you have access to this Okay, clamp. so when you loosen the bolts, they don't come out. So don't be worried about those falling down into the intake manifold. Intake manifold has been removed. We're gonna go ahead and stuff some towels in the intake to keep 
things from falling down into the intake hole down to the engine. Keep things from falling in. At this point, I would like to go with a vacuum and just kind of vacuum any kind of debris around to, just to keep the dirt and the dust away from these crucial points of uh, contact where things could fall down into the spark plug holes and stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and remove the all the electronics from the valve cover itself. You'll see tabs off the uh, harness that are connected to these studs. Go ahead and just lift up and set, set the harness aside. <laughs> electrical harness I pulled them in and I zip tied them to the fuel rail so they're all out of the way just walk around the valve covers and make sure all the bolts were accessible and no electrical harnesses uh, is, um, fastened to the studs then you want to take an 18 millimeter socket with a wrench and you are going to disconnect the engine mount bolt loosen up the bolt to remove the bracket that's blocking the valve cover from pulling up off of the head okay so next we're going to remove each expansion coil pack for the ignition to the spark plugs one at a time starting with the back three and then the front three and then we'll go ahead and remove the old spark plugs and install the new ones okay so at this point in the job i recommend replacing the spark plugs using a 5 8 spark plug socket and a 13 inch or 12 inch extension once you remove the spark plugs go ahead and replace the spark plugs i recommend watching my my video on how to prepare spark plugs prior to installation um, and then go go around do a visual visual inspection of the under bay and see look for any hoses that you may want to replace while you're here and everything's opened up and easy to access to replace. Um, PCV valve is a good one um, while we're, before we do all the valve cover replacement. Using a 10 millimeter deep wall socket, go ahead and start removing the valve cover bolts all the way around. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about 14 bolts and they're either a 10 millimeter deep wall or a 10, 8 millimeter deep wall socket. Okay, so once once you have all the bolts loose, you can pop up the valve cover off of the head and you'll hear a small little pop using a little flathead screwdriver. It just pops right off. You can just go around and pop, pop off the other sides. Okay, and as you can see, right there in that corner where we're getting an oil drip onto the exhaust and it started smoking so that's why we're going to fix this leak on this side on the back valve in order to remove the pcv valve that's this guy you're going to put a small screwdriver underneath this clip here and turn and once the valve cover is removed take note where they put the gasket rtv silicone on the corners where the timing chain cover bolts to the engine um, these are areas where the the gasket can leak. There's some other areas too. So just take note before you peel back the gasket and the three for the spark plug. Use a little screwdriver to pry, pry up on these. And they just come right out. Like Next, you want to clean off the silicone. I'm using it lightly with this razor blade, but <clears throat> sometimes it peels off and I would recommend using a piece of plastic like a credit card or a, some kind of scraper, plastic scraper, gasket scraper. Mainly because of the aluminum. You don't want to scratch the aluminum. And same for all the other silicone sections. So you want to clean the machine surfaces on the valve cover. Once all the surfaces are cleaned, remove any excess gasket material. You want to do the other side of the cylinder head as well. Wipe down all the mating surfaces where the gasket seats to the cylinder head clean especially in the areas where the timing chain cover plate 
um, bolts to the engine block. Prior to installing the valve cover gasket, you will need to remove the 14 millimeter nut to uh, loosen up the oil dipstick uh, tube. That way you can easily get the uh, Okay, so we've washed the valve cover. Now we're gonna dry it and insert the gasket. So you're just gonna place the gasket, come in close. You're gonna place the gasket and push the gasket around into the groove and just go all the way around until it's fully so pushed installed in. the gasket, so three for the spark plug holes. And the one for the, the main one for the valve cover and installed some black RTV gasket maker on the four corners. Okay, for the PCV valve, on my model, they have the long version. On some other models, they're gonna have a short version. Before you order the parts, make sure you know which one you have, the long or the, the short. Okay, so once the PCV valve is installed, you're gonna go ahead and put the tube on, like this. Slip it over, pull back the tab, there it is, set it aside. So before we put the throttle body back on, just make sure you clean the surfaces from the lower intake manifold. And uh, that way, the when we put the upper intake manifold on top of the lower intake manifolds, there's a nice seal uh, between, between the two and the gasket. Once you have the throttle body in, go ahead and refer to the manufacturer's specifications on the torque settings. You're gonna go ahead and bolt down the eight bolts. And then once you have the throttle body bolted down, go ahead and start making all your electrical connections and all of the tubing, vacuum hoses, and small control modules that we unbolted from the throttle body. Four bolts to the throttle body. Next, we're going to uh, install the air box and ducting for the throttle body. And just go ahead and double check to make sure all of your sensors are plugged in. Next, we'll go ahead and install the accelerator cable with the cruise control. Three bolts, one, two, and three. Okay, then we'll go ahead and set the accelerator cable. For the accelerator cable, you wanna just insert this right into the hole here. And then you're going to roll it all the way open, set it in, and release. And then for the cruise control, you're just going to roll the accelerator open and snap it back in, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to start up the Ford Escape. And this vehicle has 192,000 miles. And we're gonna go ahead and check it up, check it out for leaks. Okay, so we just started the car. We're gonna check for leaks. And it looks like everything's sealed pretty good. Everything's put back the way we took it apart. And it seems to be running fine. And that's the update on the, the no leak valve cover fix.